All right, as we continue looking at Matross, our resident rogue wizard, we're going to be able to finish painting him. We've got just about everything done. We're going to speed up for brevity of video, and we're going to focus on completing the cloak today. And the cloak is really where I wanted to kind of pay homage to the levels of rogue that the player has gotten. And compared to the rest of the outfit where we used greens, the player's favorite color, and then browns for leathers, silvers for little bits of armor, we're going to focus on dark colors. And as I was looking at the cloak, I wanted to put in some type of a call to the character's race of a Kenku. Because this is a super dynamic sculpt, it's got lots of lines and folds, I'm not super comfortable doing that, so I'm not going to really put in Kenku pieces on this miniature. But I did think it would be really cool. I thought of the mimicry of a Kenku, and so I thought of the cloak being able to be turned around and having two sides to it. So I'm going to do two different colors, and playing off of the green, I'm going to use purples and reds. So we're going to do the lining as a real dark purple, and I kind of envision in my mind that when Matross is doing rogue things, he's going to flip this cloak around and use the darker side if he needs to for any type of night or dark situations. Otherwise, the red is going to give enough darkness, uh, but also kind of give that status that he has some wizardly. So we'll make it a little more like sheen colored compared to the lining, which is going to be very, very dark. And again, the purples are going to play off really well with the greens, as will the red. And having to switch brushes here a little bit just because of the different angles I need to get to. Realistically, this cloak lining should have been painted before a lot of the other figure, but I really was trying to save it for last just to see where I kind of came up with in the concept. And you can see here the dark around the hood is going to set off the face really well. And from the front, you don't see a whole lot of the lining of the cloak, but that's okay. It still looks pretty good. And after giving that a moment to dry, we're going to move to the exterior of the cloak. And I am using Reaper paints here. Red is one of the hardest colors to paint on miniatures. And if you're doing mini paintings, red you know is a bang. And... I can tell you that I highly recommend utilizing the triad systems. It works really well because as you're shading or highlighting red, if you use just one tone, try to highlight, you're going to get pink. If you try to darken, you're going to get brown. It's a very challenging color to do. So we'll see what you think of how well this came out using the Reaper triads. I personally was really happy with the results, but definitely leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. And Matross, as that rogue start, multi-classing into a wizard, has been definitely a good boon for the party. He is able to do a lot of damage as well as spell support. And the party as a whole, utilizing him kind of as that first massive attack with some of his rogue abilities and then backing off to do spell support to keep enemies engaged has been fantastic to see played out. Now the colors are going to be very thinned down and it's highly humid here so we do have to pause here and there to set it down to let dry. And that purple shade now as we go through and start highlighting again with a triad color the ultimate kind of test for me on whether or not I've done a good job painting miniatures for the tabletop is whether or not the players 
can recognize who their miniatures are supposed to represent. And of course we are still meeting virtually, so the players have not yet gotten to hold their miniatures. But once we do get everybody comfortable with meeting together around the table, it's going to be really exciting to see what the players think of the miniatures that they've uh, gotten painted for them. So always rewarding. You can see now the real dark colors set in. That cloak, of course, the outer layer is going to take a while to dry, but we can focus on the interior, start highlighting it up. This is where we'll really be able to show and call out the details sculpted into this miniature by utilizing the lines that are sculpted in and highlighting those up just as if the light were hitting them. And the linings of the cloak, sometimes it can be a little confusing just because they are generally more in shadow. However, that's okay. Calling out the details, we're just trying to trick the eye so you can see the detail sculpted in and know that it's a fabric that does have shadows and lights. And of course there will be additional basing done that will not be part of the video but the minis will also get some details added onto their bases just to make them complete and ready to go so that the players if they don't want to use them on the table if they have their own miniature to represent their character they can still put it on a shelf and display it and hopefully enjoy it. The colors here for the triads that I'm doing these all come together from Reaper. They're form formulated specifically for highlighting and shading of set colors so they're all tonally similar. You'll see as we move through and start working on the highlight areas how they blend really well and really highlight up. And of course it is going to take quite a bit before we get there. That red we're going to have to do an additional layer on just because it's so thin and the gray primer still does show through. And for a bit here I'm going to move off camera. That is not intentional. It was just because I was concentrating really hard but trying to make sure that I keep this in focus at all times. And that's actually a good show there that you can see the different details in the lining of the cloak. There's a lot of sculpted details that really work well with the miniature, just highlighting to make sure that they're easy to see with the dark colors we've chosen. And in case you haven't watched the whole series, the base on this miniature is a little different than the others. It's because so many of our players have their favorite color as green, so I had to really change it up and use different bases to represent the different players favorite color of green. But the cloak itself, again the colors on this should really stand out from the clothing on the miniature for the pants and the little bit of tunic and sleeves that you see. And when the contrasting colors are there it really just helps make that miniature stand out a little bit more and really allows your eyes to focus on differences of the mini, the cloak versus the figure under the cloak. So really important to use some good strong contrasting colors when you're painting miniatures. Even if they don't make a whole lot of sense like this one here for a rogue wizard. Again I did not just want to go with blacks and grays. So really wanted to change it up and bring in the player's favorite color of green in a big way. I think we accomplished that really well. Of course you could almost say this could pass as a ranger pretty easily now with all the greens and browns and who knows maybe the player will use this miniature in a different campaign at a later date as a ranger character. Whatever they do with their miniatures is always kind of interesting to think about. The highlighting here, one of the pros of doing nice thin layers as you're highlighting you're doing smaller and smaller sections so they can actually dry faster. So you can go through and get the highlighting done faster. And as we continue to do our highlights you'll see these folds show up better and better in the video. 
Now they're a little difficult to see, but when we highlight, that's where we really call attention to the detail of the sculpt, really honor the sculptors. They do a lot of fantastic work that if you don't do a good paint job, just does not get the highlight it needs. And that cloak here in the video, it looks a lot more purple. Again, it will be a red, which is the hardest color to paint. But as we continue to build up those colors, you'll see it better and better. But focusing on the purple, again, this is going kind of different than you would on the outer cloak because we're highlighting high patches, which are actually low patches. So this would be like reflected light or refracted light coming up off the ground, except for in this part where it flaps over the shoulder, that will get a regular highlight and really show that inner lining coloring. And Matroth, as he is continuing on his journey in the story, really making his way through the area and the world looking for the ability to enhance his spells to really enhance his rogue abilities of sneak attack and stealthing around it's fantastic to see the progression of the character and I wish I had a good Kenku mini here's where I start going off screen just getting too focused on what I'm doing but back to it but again I think this will be a, a good opportunity to just reward the player with a well sculpted well painted mini that can be used as a rogue wizard multi-class in the game a lot better than just a robed wizard for this character and you can see these highlights really starting to come up now you're able to see some of the sculpting some of the folds in the lining of the cloak as those continue to get highlighted up they just stand out more and more prominently and again we don't want to take away from the miniature from the figure itself we just want to enhance it and envelop it with those contrasting colors to make the miniature itself the figure stand out from the cloak so almost like having a screen behind him, something that just really makes the character stand out and be eye-catching and appealing. Moving into, you'll notice I have to keep changing brushes here just because of the size of the miniature. Where I've got bigger opportunity to paint, I use a number two brush. And then for some of the details, I use a size one with a, with a sharper tip. But for these bigger sections, you'll see the red really stand out here and cover up that gray undertone so it'll look less purple. And Matroth actually marks through a just over halfway painting of our adventuring party. So pretty exciting to see the progression of the miniatures making a party as a whole. When we did the kind of intermission where we did not use a week to paint and just highlighted what we had painted so far, I hope that was enjoyable for everybody. We'll probably do that at one more point too before we do the last miniature, um, but I'm not certain, but we definitely will do a video showing the entire adventuring party once all the miniatures are painted. And this campaign is going f to level 10. The characters are just fifth level now, so they've got five progressive levels to go. They have gotten a lot of small side quests for setup for some of the background story of the campaign. And really, I've used that to see how they are kind of viewed in the world and where they can look for for support 
and where they have to be leery of for people trying to undermine what they're attempting to accomplish in the story. So it's been really good. Now that red is going to take a while to dry. Of course, again, we've got a lot of high com humidity here, so we set it down and gave it quite a while. And we look for that sheen to go away and then really make sure that it's dry before we start progressing on. Because if those layers aren't dry, we're going to just pull the paint away from previous layers and from the mini. So we've got to make sure anytime you're putting paint down, put it down on dry paint unless you're doing a wet blending technique, which is a little more advanced technique. And for my tabletop minis, there aren't a whole lot of times I use wet blending. That's really something I save for competition. And here you'll start to see how we make the reds progress from this darkest tone, which is the shadow tone, up to the highlight. Rather than putting on a mid-tone and shading down using washes or anything like that, because that can muddy and cloud the paint, I started with the darkest and I'm just going to highlight up to the brightest reds. With the hard to paint colors like black, red, yellows, and whites, I find that's the better technique for a cleaner paint job. And as this comes together, you'll see it really unfold and be able to show you the kind of difference from when we do like leather, where we put down a mid-tone and then put on a dark wash and then highlight up. So Matross in the party a lot of times has the arcane knowledge that the party needs to pull from, but he is not the party's leader. The character of Matross likes to kind of be indiscreet and in the background, and it's kind of fun to watch how, as some of the other players look to him for, uh, you know, magical and arcane insight or getting around things. They know he's very sneaky and can move up and just deal lots of damage and sneak around and spy things out. Um, for him, he's got set goals of gaining more knowledge and power in that arcane focus. So he's more kind of along for the ride, definitely willing to do what needs to be done, but he's not the driver of the bus at all. So it's a fun dynamic for the character, in my opinion. It's fantastic to watch how this Kenku, who is just kind of adopted this group who can help him meet his ends really have to kind of stay nondescript and in the background and kind of look out for how is everything going to get him his interests realized so it's a it's a fun character concept and I know the players as a whole definitely see the damage output that Matroth can do. So it's always fun to watch at the table setting when they hope that Matroth goes in to uh, whether it's start things up or suss out possible villains or motives of people that they're or creatures that they're encountering. And Matroth is kind of this thing that it's like, uh, no, it's not for me. It's kind of fun to watch. Here you can see some of the progressions on red. One of the good things about using these thin coats, again with highlighting like we did with the lining of the cloak, we can go in and that upper part is dry by the time we get to the bottom. So the exterior of the cloak we can actually highlight at a good pace and really get this figure done. And it's always when you're getting this close to finishing a miniature it can be a little unnerving because I have not yet decided which character I'm gonna paint next 
And recently in the party in the campaign, we had a change of characters. So we've had a couple join and we had one character that actually was killed. So the player had to use their backup character. So I have not yet decided which miniature I'm going to paint next. And my goal is once this one is complete, I'm going to put up the unpainted miniatures and just see which one looks to be the most rewarding. I may base it off of what the challenge league that I'm in is going to get me the best kind of outcome, what's going to meet my needs. But we'll see when we get there. This one has still got a little bit to go on the table as we're highlighting this red. I hope you're able to see the reds really coming together and being red and not purple. The red, as I've mentioned a couple times, is actually the hardest color to paint, in my opinion, one of the hardest colors. I would definitely say the hardest color. Reds and purples, black, white, and yellow, probably the most challenging. So using this triad really helps. You can see the details really standing out now in this sculpted cloak, which is kind of why I elected not to put on. Initially, I had played with different ideas of painting feathers on the edge of the cloak or painting a raven or two on the like bottom corners of the cloak. I've elected not to do that just because of these sculpted details. You can see it's got a lot of dimension to it and while you can definitely do it um, there's a great process where you draw the picture and then fold the paper as it would the cloak and then you can use that for a visual guide on how to paint those details on a cloak that has these types of folds again because these are just tabletop miniatures for a game that we're playing the time that it takes to do that process is a little bit more challenging. So I elected not to do that on this miniature and just go with a standard paint job just so we can continue to paint miniatures, get this party all painted and have the miniatures available for the party members once we get a chance to meet in person and play around the table rather than virtually. So cutting corners a little bit, but overall for the party, I think it's something that I'm really comfortable with. And again, because this is not a direct representation of the character itself, I'm okay just doing a really good clean paint job for the player to have a miniature painted and something they can proudly own. The cowl here, as it kind of wraps around the face and buckles into a little area there, also has a lot of detail sculpted into it. So we really have to be careful on highlighting just the raised areas. That's going to give us good definition for the folds and really frame up that face as well as the shoulders. The one shoulder has that pauldron on it which stands out a little bit so it's got a little bit of character there. We want to make sure that we just highlight enough that there's differentiation in the colors and again kind of that backdrop to the miniature itself. So the cloak will almost be like a second piece because it's contrasting so much with the greens and really important when you're painting miniatures, good high contrast colors really make them stand out well. As we continue to highlight, you can just see those folds getting almost like deeper and deeper. And it's actually just because we're bringing those highlights up higher and higher in color as we get closer and closer to the final product, you'll see that just really gives it a lot of dimension. And with the eye, you can see those details just really stand out from each other. One of the things I really like about painting miniatures is 
having the sculpted details be this visually apparent again just really gives the sculptors a a good bang for their buck I guess it really highlights the detail that they do the work they put into sculpting these minis and of course the quality of minis that get produced at some point I'm really looking forward to being able to do similar painting videos with some of the Reaper bones if you haven't seen our Facebook page we are going to be doing a live unboxing once we receive the Bones 5 Kickstarter. Make sure to check that out. Some of the sculpts in there are amazing. A pirate ship that's almost three foot long. Uh, just some of the different miniatures they're putting out. So fantastic. Make sure to check out our Facebook page if you want to watch that. We will be updating once we get the details for when we're going to be doing that video. That will be live on Facebook here on the YouTube channel. Of course, we're going to continue doing our mini mastery until we get through the whole adventuring party for the campaign of The Last Light that I'm GMing. And we've already gone through so many miniatures. We've got a, just over halfway now with Matroth. A few more to go, and then we'll kind of unveil the entire party, the party in its entirety. <laughs> and we'll do that nice and, and scenically. We'll make a great video for that. So you can see the different characters who are in the campaign of The Last Light. Getting a little off screen there. Gotta make sure we keep it centered so you can see really well. I hope if you're watching this video, if you're streaming it at work or just having it on for some background and looking for tips and tricks and techniques that it's enjoyable. At some point I'll have to go through and put a music overlay on some of the videos where we're painting so you can just relax and unwind. Just absolutely find your center, get your key in order, and start thinking about painting miniatures for me as both a hobby as well as a profession it is a fantastic hobby as a little plug I do commissions so if you need miniatures painted please reach out I love to do commissions I love to find commissions that are challenging as well so if you've got a miniature in mind or you need a representation for a character in your game situation and you're interested in a commission definitely reach out I always have commissions going in the summertime so commissions are always open for me the ones that get the tightest for calendar is around the holidays so if you're thinking about a Christmas gift for someone, don't hesitate to start shopping in the summer. So Matroth, you can see those details really coming alive, really standing out from the miniature. And with that, Matroth is done. One more miniature. We've just got to base him and get him on the table. Details look great, a lot of character and one more completed in our adventuring party of a finished start to finish painting of a character sure hope you enjoyed join us next time thanks for checking out that video hope you enjoyed it make sure if you haven't already please subscribe also if you don't mind getting the notifications be sure to hit that bell so you can see when we're posting new content give us a thumbs up just so we can help reach new audience members and leave a comment and let us know what you thought of this video just so we can help create better content and better react to what you need. Additionally, here's another video we think you may enjoy. And of course, be sure to hit that subscribe. And of course, please be sure to let us know where will your adventures take you.